Greetings everyone, it is me, Galem, and welcome back to the last video of, well, the last bonus video of Metroid Zero Mission. And as you can tell from here, I had some outtakes, which is something I'll talk about later. First, since I've already talked about original Metroid in the last part, we're going to be talking about these two. Let's start with Metroid Fusion Link. Basically, because I'm on Wii U, I can't exactly do this. What the game wants you to do is plug a link cable into a second GBA with Metroid Fusion uh, inserted into it. Then you want to turn on that GBA and put it into link mode by pressing start and select. I'll, uh, I'll show what that looks like right now. On this screen, you want to press start and select and it will put into uh, link mode. And to resume gameplay, you press A to basically, well, put it back into game mode. This is something I didn't know until years later. What this does is, uh, if the Fusion Link is successful, it will take any clear screens from Metroid Fusion and put it into the gallery of Metroid Zero Mission. While I will talk about the Fusion screens in due time, I also... I can't remember if this is true or not, but if I remember correctly, this is also where you can finally view the Japanese-only um, clear screens from Metroid Fusion. The gallery here is where you can review all of your clear screens that you've gotten during your adventures in this game. Such as, this is any percent on normal, and 100% on normal and it will just loop and you can just view each image with uh, with the press of a button but you, you go back with holding B. I will show on screen all of the uh, all the uh, images you get for clearing this game and uh, what criteria you need for them. I'll just say good luck with the low percent ones and the fast clear ones. You are going to need to bring your A game for that. To start a new game, uh, well, you want to take a script, uh, a uh, save file with a game, like a save file with the game already clear on. Okay, let me get my words uh, together. To show, since I'm going to be showing off a little bit of hard mode, you want to take a uh, save file with a clear, uh, like with a uh, game clear on it such as that S you see in the uh, corner, and you want to select New. This will delete the existing save file, but this will allow you to access hard mode. So if you're wondering how uh, hard mode is going to be like, I'm going to go up as far as the uh, first missile pack to basically give you, give you an expl a explanation. It's pretty late here, so I apologize if I'm tripping over my words. So, on top of missile packs uh, being halved, as well as power bomb packs, well, enemies do more damage. So you have to be careful with uh, with your positioning and such. Also, for basically clearing the game once, guess what's on your screen now? You actually now have uh, have statistics on item pickups wherever you are. So now you know in Brinstar there are three energy tanks, ten missile tanks, one and one super missile tank. At least in this part. This is something I didn't know until, well, if a couple of outtakes ago. So for this mode, you want to be careful with how much damage you take. You're as frail as Samus in the original Metroid, simply because, uh, simply because of enemies doing more damage and such. And you also want to be careful with uh, how you traverse around enemies, simply because not only, uh, not only do you not have your full range right away, but they do way more damage too. So, yeah. Fortunately, uh, getting through the game in terms of from uh, 
uh, point A to point B is not going to be much of an issue since the game will always point you in the right direction and you have to actively, you have to actively, uh, like, uh, uh, do, th do some shenanigans to basically sequence break it and such. Remember, in the Let's Play, I decided to get the, uh, I decided to get the super missiles early, like, I could avoid a boss with how early I got him. And I was thinking I was gonna have to just try to play hard mode my own time, or just play through a different save file, but it turns out, it's unlocked, like, it's unlocked uh, with a game clear, and they just don't tell you about it until you decide to select new game on an existing save file. And personally, I wish it was an unlock uh, screen uh, thing, because if it was, well, it would have been easier to show off. Like, I've had a few outtakes, uh, uh, outtakes because I'm struggling to explain everything. And I don't even need to heal. <laughs> so yeah. Basically, with the long beam, you're able to, uh, you're able to take advantage of your situations, uh, but I'm going to tell you this right now, I'm probably not going to do a hard mode playthrough for, uh, for the time being, simply because I've already played through this game, and, uh, I'm probably going to do, uh, going to do hard mode when I'm, like, really bored or something. I'm probably not going to go for 100%, but you do get screens for it, as I've shown in the gallery uh, menu. While I'm talking about this, I want to talk about the scrapped intro video I wanted to do for this. I had, like, because I never put together a, uh, a uh, intro video with a proper, uh, with a proper, like, uh, the uh, prologue where it just has like sliding uh, storyboard screens or something like that. Well, I kind of couldn't exactly muster up the uh, motivation to try to make that. And on top of that, a friend of mine was going to be uh, do the narration on it. That friend was uh, Zwadakeda. And it was more so trying to find a time where he was going to be available so we could uh, get that done and I forgot the one like uh, ju like adjustment that he said I should make for uh, uh, for the final uh, uh, for the final go around I even wrote a script down and everything maybe someday uh, when I'm more adept with editing videos I might but that is going to be uh, for later if I remember correctly, you actually go down first. <laughs> and I want to say there are more enemies in this, uh, like, in this mode. I'm not entirely sure. Then again, I'm also due for playing Master Mode on uh, Breath of the Wild, and uh, would you believe that seven years later, after the game's release, I still haven't done that? <laughs> Oh gosh, Breath of the Wild 7. I'm not going to be ready for the day when it turns 10. <laughs> I'm not ready for the day when the Switch turns 10. But yeah, I apologize if I could not make that video, but... Look how many missiles you get for a missile tank. That is normally 5 missiles instead of 2. So yeah, not only do you have less health to go by, but you also have... Uh, but you also, uh, but you also have to, like, take more damage to do so. Oof. So, yeah. I'm, like... <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Also, I'm not sure how people are able to, say, defeat this boss on the first go-around, but sometimes, like, but it's entirely possible to defeat this boss on the first go-around, but 
it's really hard to do with how limited your uh, kit is at the start. The only thing that isn't changed is how much health you get from uh, energy tanks. That stays the same. Fortunately, they were merciful enough to not always have each energy tank or start you with 30 each time, so yeah. I will stop the recording now and move on to the next part of the video where, where I'll be talking about NES Metroid, its, uh, well, and its, uh, quirks, oddities, and password system. Because I've held off on talking about it in the, uh, well, in the second bonus video, but I will talk about it next. So, I will see you back in a moment. So when it comes to the original Metroid, the password system is probably the more interesting thing about it. So many people have dissected into the passwords uh, in our workings and have even made a little system that lets you form a game state you want and allow you to put in the password to put it into the game and such. It is literally a 144-bit string code that has 128 bits be part of the game state, and the remaining be the, well, the checksums. There are going to be some cases of this, uh, like of these codes, uh, having checksums in invalid places where you can't exactly, well, load them correctly. And that's something we're going to be talking about, uh, after the, uh, well, after this part of the video. And this is a rather vulgar password, as you can tell from the third world uh, word. It spawns you in Turian, no Morph Ball, no Varia Suit, and you have to be absolutely careful here. And basically, I'm going to try my best to fit all I can about original Metroid in, in this... Uh, <clears throat> in this uh, particular video since it's long overdue but uh, it's basically everything else that I couldn't exactly fit into it I could go over the other stuff such as the uh, such as the uh, zero mission manga which you can probably find somewhere translated and archived there is also uh, other pieces of um, uh, like supplementary Metroid material, such as the originals, like uh, such as the like uh, original depictions of the story, where like uh, where instead of a galactic federation as we know it, it was a it was like a huge race of uh, a huge mixture of uh, of. Uh, uh, separate races from all across the galaxy but uh, but there is so much that I can't exactly fit into here so I'm going to talk about the more interesting parts of course this is also uh, of course we also have the Justin Bailey code which supposedly me is just stands for just in Bailey I want to say the, the Bailey is referring to like a swimsuit or something. I'll probably go over it in a little bit, like after I'm done recording this po uh, bit of po yeah, post commentary. Um, anyways, uh, the like one of the things that it can, uh, like the password can detect is what doors have been opened and what doors aren't. It also detects how many of those uh, one barriers have been destroyed. And, uh, what you're seeing here is what it's going to be like going through this since you have no Morph Ball. You literally have to avoid, uh, avoid that, like, have to avoid them, uh, latching onto your head. And, uh, and even then I still got a few more things to record for this. Um, I am thankful that I'm finally almost done with this, uh, section of videos and such because they've been long overdue. Like, really long overdue. But, yeah. You also don't have the long beam uh, in this, so... If that, like, sure, you don't need the long beam to uh, 
progress and such. But uh, having it is better than not uh, than nothing. But yeah. But now you see my big issue with this game when it comes to the passwords, the fact that it always spawns you with 30 HP. I am going to try my best to look for footage of every single version of NES Metroid using a certain password we'll be talking about next. And how about that lucky uh, break there? I almost got my... I almost got uh, a Metroid attached to my head, like here. <laughs> but I was in a vertical shaft. I will say I do like how Turian looks here. And I do think that they've translated Turian... Uh, like, like, they've translated Turian flawlessly twice. And if you have two Metroids in the right spot, just using uh, just uh, using your missile is able to hit both of them, and you're sa able to save some missiles in the process. But... Oi. <laughs> I will... I might as well go over the fact about, uh, like, uh, the late Gunpei Yokoi, the... Uh, front, like, uh, initial director of the series before, uh, before his, uh, for, uh, his leave, uh, from Nintendo somewhere in the 90s. Like, like, I don't know if it was, uh, like, I don't think he was fired, but he did leave sometime after the, uh, failure of the, uh, of the Virtual Boy. Don't mind me, I'm just trying to get some extra health. And failing at it <laughs> but to but uh, one of the last things he made before his untimely demise was the wonder swan which from what I've uh, tell is a Japan only uh, a exclusive handheld console by ba uh, by Bandai and as much as I wish I can get one of those they're rather pricey they only came out in one region for a reason and it does have its healthy selection of games. It even had a few exclusive Mega Man titles on it. It had Battle Network titles. It had a classic Mega Man title. And such. But the problem is that if you want to play it well, if you want to play that system, it's either emulate or hope you can find a good deal on a working one. <laughs> but uh, we have him to thank for Metroid and for... And for uh, the game, uh, the Game Boy, and such. And on top of that, well, he's been with uh, Nin he was with Nintendo for quite some time. In fact, one of his first contributions was the toy known as the Ultra Hand, a he Nintendo branded toy that was, well, that is one of the things that they do love to reference in various titles, Animal Crossing especially, but. If you've played Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, or just Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, the very thing that's holding the, uh, that's holding the anti-gravity section of GBA Mario Circuit up is something known as the Ultra Arms, which is a nice throwback. And if I remember correctly, in New Leaf, there's a bunch of Nintendo toys, uh, uh, as, uh, fortune cookie stuff. Though I could be wrong, be aware that I've never really played a new Leaf. I've only watched playthroughs of it. My issue was uh, the fact that I don't think I could make myself commit to Animal Crossing, and that was the case during like, right, like uh, during the uh, one and a half years of uh, of gameplay time I was playing uh, uh, playing it, uh, like from 2020 to sometime in 2021. I never did finish that museum. I got close. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to go back to it immediately. <laughs> but, yeah. And, uh... But, uh... I am glad that the series has still been in good hands, uh... Since, uh... Like, since, uh, Yokoi's departure, Sakamoto's been there from the very beginning as well. And I will say that, uh... I will say that, uh... Ah, crap. Oh, yeah. This is what happens. Yeah, this is what happens if you're not careful. And, uh... 
I just personally forgot to edit around that. Admittedly, I'm trying to get this done relatively quickly, but uh, this is the this is the playthrough that's going to show off the ending that I have not covered. Basically, this is going to be the only time I'm also going to be grinding for health because this is what it's going to look like if I didn't edit all of it, and it would waste a lot of your time. So I'm hoping my commentary is keeping you interested. Fortunately, this shouldn't last too long, but uh, eh, but if you just want to scroll straight to uh, to the room with Mother Brain in it, well, uh, just go ahead and do that. Eh, I don't blame you. So yeah, but now that I'm at max HP and such, I think I'm gonna make a a bit of a safe stay here. This is why I've been playing the. Uh, this is why I've been playing the original Metroid on. I'm kind of glad that I decided to just do it this way instead because if it, uh, I might as well just like I've had the service, I might as well start using it and, and such. Like it's just that there are some games that I wish uh, the Nintendo Switch Online service would get. So while I'm talking about this. One thing I keep failing to mention, I failed to have mentioned this, like, uh, during the recording process for these two, uh, for these, like, two bonus videos. Metroid F uh, Zero Mission came out in February of 2004. It has now been 20 years since Metroid Fusion has been released, and it still stands as one of my favorite titles to play. And it still bothers me that they haven't put it on the uh, Nintendo Switch Online service. They put, like, F-Zero Maximum Velocity on the service before, the, uh, before Zero Mission. They have Fusion already on there. And it's, like, like Zero Mission is just the better game to play. <laughs> like, sure, this has historical value. And I'm not going to discredit that. But... Zero Mission is just the better game. <laughs> uh, because, like, because, uh, because of, well, the better everything. <laughs> uh, I still don't like this room, and considering that, yeah, I don't even have the, like, I don't even have the Varya suit and such, and as you can tell, Mother Brain's already dead. Yeah, I don't know what does this. I think it might have to do with the tick integer, but this is the reason why I did not show the last and worst ending you could get in an original Metroid in the initial second bonus video, or the 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 bonus video that came before this one. Ugh. And getting out of that lava is a pain. Because, ugh. You have to worry about, like, because of how much it gimps your jump. And it's happened again, and it will always keep happening if you're not careful. Ugh. I really don't like this room. I really don't like this room. Ugh. It just keeps freaking happening because of how low the uh, how low the ceiling is for it and you can tell why I didn't bother editing around this I didn't bother doing any of that simply because of how much of uh, how much of a problem it was I wanted to just actually get it done and on top of that because of the because of Mother Brain already being defeated, the timer is not there. There is no timer for this. <clears throat> I don't know if the tick integer affects um, like Mother Brain and such, but I'm going to tell you something on why this has the worst ending. If you buy uh, why this has the worst ending. There is no one who's going to be able to hum uh, humanly do this. So this is why we use cheat codes and such 
to achieve this kind of stuff because no one can uh, because I don't know if I have to say this but no one in the entire human race can live as long as dragons in mythical fo uh, folklore no one is going to spend now get with me 300 plus years of their life playing this game and trying to spend as long as possible just to achieve this ending Heck, how does one even get past everything without the Morph Ball? You just can't. And even then... And you're already, like, uh, you're already in the, uh, in the original Zero Suit, and then some. But because you took way too long... Samus just throws her head in shame. Now, one thing I'm not showing is the Japanese uh, file select um, uh, for uh, original Metroid. The Japanese file select has actually uh, does have like uh, bags of money for showing your uh, clear status on each of the games, and that's more or less because. Well, she's a bounty hunter, and that's the one time they actually paid uh, tribute to that. But now that this is done, the next part of the video will be talking about another rather more well-known vulgar code. So you guys don't need to see uh, don't need to see the rest of these credits. We've already seen them in the last bonus video, so I will be back. With me trying to conjure up every single version of NES Metroid and showing off every single effect of what happens when you enter this particular code. Back in a little bit. So, I didn't know I didn't have footage for this. So, yeah. I tried recording uh, B-roll footage all the way back in September when I was still recording this for uh, the initial run, but uh, motivation, uh, motivational issues and then some that, well, affected the whole thing in the process. So I'm going to, I'm going to show off two passwords this case just to make up for it. So first, let's show off what happens if you should enter this password in this version of the game. This also happens in the uh, NES Classics, or yeah, just the NES Classics uh, re-release of this. Because, if I remember correctly, the Famicom Mini re-release would probably have the save system. So, give me a moment to enter this extremely vulgar password. I'm also going to have uh, post commentary on all of the versions I can find and all their effects. So yeah. I just realized I spelled Mother Ridley. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that would just give me an error or something, but if in case it does work, I kind of want to see what it has. I'll probably punch it into uh, into a password generator, but by pressing start, you just get booted back to the tile screen. I will have future me go over all the effects. However, let's show off a different password. This one is a hard-coded password, and it was hard-coded by Nintendo R&D one by uh, uh, themselves. So by inputting. By inputting Narpus Sword, as you can tell, our projectiles are that of the ice beam with the wave beams. Uh, uh, our projectiles are basically they look like the wave beam, but they are the ice beam. Another thing you can easily tell just from looking at it is that we have everything. Infinite missiles, we have the Varya suit, we take absolutely no damage from anything, 
And if you want to make this game comfortable for yourself, I highly recommend playing it this way. I'm going to uh, show off uh, as much as I could with this, but I'm going to say the little like uh, the little like uh, glitch that can happen if you should avoid a missile pack until Turian, even though you have missiles yourself. Um, I'm not exactly in any sort of mood to show that off. Because the issue is that uh, I really don't want to play through uh, through this game again. Even though I took some damage, I am invincible. I can't take any sort of damage from anything. So I could easily just take any damage that I want and my HP will actually just reset to random numbers anyway. It will not go below 30 and such. But if you really wanted to, like, uh, clear this game in any sort of way, uh, I realize I'm not in the one shaft. It's been a while since I've played this. Personally, I'm ready to take a break from Metroid, get that all edited and squared away, and then finally, finally get, uh, get, uh, get Crash and other projects on the run. In fact, as of this recording, I do have a little bit of Crash Bandicoot Warped recorded. I've had several projects recorded ahead of time, and the earliest going uh, for 2024 going back to February, like early February, and it just I just haven't been having the best luck trying to get to them. <sighs> so yeah, that is NAR password. You have long beam, you have wave beam projectiles, but with the ice beam power up and such. Though I really wish this was the ice beam itself because it looks stronger and I like the way it looks and I wish there was a password to give us this form of ice beam. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I can just be as reckless as I want and not care because I've earned it, I've played through all of this game. If I should end up recording it again, I'm likely going to record it for a friend's channel or for a different channel, whatever. I just don't, I just, I'm just uh, fine with not playing this game for a long while because I just would rather play Zero Mission. But yeah, maybe someday, like, uh, I'm, like I would like to show the footage of uh, what would happen if you enter Turian with this password on and avoid the, uh, and avoid the uh, missile packs and such. But unfortunately, uh, I can't really, you know, well, I can't really show that without putting more gameplay time into this, and I've already spent long enough trying to get this uh, video uh, done and such. So I'm going to take the pa uh, the elevator down, and I will see you with the other effects of the Engage Ridley password. Back in a moment. To start with the uh, other versions of NES Metroid and this particular password, with the version you can unlock through Metroid Prime, as well as the Wii and Wii U versions, the game will simply just crash and send you to the tile screen as you can see here. On select reprints of the game, you'll simply just load up the first screen of Brinstar, however you will infinitely loop uh, from left to right over and over again, simply because it's in an invalid area. I don't know what the criteria of the version is, from what I've heard it's possibly the 3 screw copy, but I cannot find any information outside of, regrettably, a fandom wiki. There is this myth that still persists about entering this code on the 3DS bricks your console. No, it just hard locks it. This particular code tends to have issues with the console in question, and you either have to hold the power button or outright remove the battery from the 3DS just to uh, get it to reset. The footage I, I have uh, found and scoured for shows this in action. 
and I want to thank them for uh, for providing this footage. If you're one of the lucky few to have this uh, NES Classic when they were around, this is what happens if you enter the code here. On a 5 screw copy, supposedly, this is uh, the best footage I can find for it. Well, you just get this black screen, and it stayed that way until you restart the console. So here we are with the original Metroid on the Nintendo Switch. And by so and I'm going to show you what happens if you enter that very vulgar password on this version of the game. And here I am here I am uh, trying to enter it on the wrong version on the wrong word. Password's so infamous that it causes strange things to happen, and also, it also feels like Nintendo makes sure that uh, players uh, don't do something stilly. It, stilly? I meant silly. How fitting that an invalid integer is also a very vulgar password. Yep, this is what happens. <laughs> Now, if you should play Metroid through this method, there are also different ways to play it. The decisive battle against Ridley. This is your. This is one of the few. Uh, this where like they make uh, they provide a version of the game with a save file that allows you to get to a certain point. Basically, in this version of Metroid, you start uh, the battle against Ridley with all of her equipment, including the ice beam upgrade for her weapon. Ridley is also now known as a f for being a playable character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. You know, the trailer that saw Mega Man and Mario get impaled. Yeah, that me uh, that trailer. There's also the Special 2 option, which basically gives you her, her entire arsenal from the get-go. So yeah. Don't be surprised if I show any of this off for a game that uh, has a chance of showing up here. I don't really play NES games that much. It's just kind of just a console that I just revisit the least. Similarly to the N64. It's bias. Because I just can't stay away from this game, I figured it's only fitting to show off the playable version of this code. By changing two letters, Put in the replace the end and engage to seven. And for the last word, replace the R to uh, to a J. This is because of the two letters we changed. We're essentially we're essentially changing the the, uh, the checksum, meaning that as soon as we put it in this way, here is what you get. It's similar to the mother brain f and toast uh, password, but you only have three health uh, health packs, and and let me pause this for a moment to explain this. You only have three health packs. You've collected ten missiles, but only have eighty-two of them. You have ice beam, Varia suit, Zero suit, but no morph ball, and you start in Turian. And you don't have a screw attack. Not that it matters in this uh, level and such. But you want to know another thing? Just like the mother brain code, 
This too has over a hundred years in playtime. In fact, in the uh, in the NTSC version, it's around. Let me count the digits: three million three hundred and ninety-one and five hundred and fifty-seven hours. In the European version, the PAL version, it's around four million sixty-nine thousand eight hundred and ninety-two hours. So in so. As this would take 386 years of game time to achieve in the US version, it's 464 years in the PAL version, probably because the PAL version runs a bit slower. But now, I have to defeat uh, defeat Metroids the harder way because... Uh, because of the lack of... Uh, uh, because of the lack of, well, screw attack and everything. <laughs> uh, it's like I could just never stay away from this game now, can I? But here's the other thing. Uh, no screw attack. And, uh, Mother Brain isn't dead. I'm pretty sure I could just change the like change uh, the code a bit just to have Mother Brain be dead beforehand, but Mother Brain ain't toast, and yeah. So yeah, I am very sorry this took so long, but personally, I want to thank everyone who's been patient with me for this series. The last thing I'm probably not going to be able to show because of well, well I could just rewind and just persist through is the fact that only one of the barriers is up for this password. And I think you can just go back to, well, uh, Brinstar? Maybe I should look at the footage because of the uh, platform and such. But yeah, if you want to donate, there are a couple links in the description below. Any amount helps. If you want to fo uh, follow any future projects, it's just a simple click the subscribe button in the bell, but you don't have to, you don't want to. Hope you're taking good care of yourself, and I should finally see you with that outtake reel that's been long overdue. It's, or, it's, it's almost the end of April at the time of me recording this. Thank you so much for your patience. Mm -hmm.